This is our information bookmark. This bookmark is for stages four, five, and seven. Give your students a bookmark because it can be used for informational paragraph that just has the topic sentence details and conclusion. Stages four and five have those elements. Or jump up to stage seven, a paragraph that has an introduction with a hook, topic sentence details, conclusion, and snappy ending. Or stage seven where we expand and we make the introduction body and conclusion for three paragraphs. Same bookmark can be used. Here's your bookmark that you will use in order to revise and edit your writing for the organization and the content. Is it organized? Is everything in the right order? Do you have everything you need for this specific genre? Let's say the chant that goes with this bookmark. Introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Once we have our introduction, body, and conclusion, what are we gonna do? We're going to go back into our paper and we are going to code it. What needs to be in the introduction? Hook in the reader. Then introduce the big idea. And what's the secret formula for our big idea? SS light bulb. Let's go to the body. Body. What are we going to look for in the body? Details, details, details. And the details need to be about the big idea. What's going to be at the end of our paper? The conclusion. What needs to be in the conclusion? Repeat that big idea, but use different words and end it with a snap. We have set our chant with the introduction, the elements in the introduction, a hook, and the big idea using SS light bulb. The body needs to have details. We go to the bottom, the conclusion, repeat the big idea. There's our secret formula, S light bulb. And finally, a snappy ending. These are the parts and elements in your stage seven. So this is stage seven writing. When we're using stage four and five, use this bookmark, cross out the hook and the snappy ending with pencil so they can erase that when they head up to stage seven and they have a hook and a snappy ending in their writing. This way we only have one bookmark for information. It's a wonderful way to reduce the number of bookmarks that you give to your kids as well as showing them as they move up the stages they're adding more to their writing. Let's erase our hook and our snappy ending X on this bookmark because our demonstration lesson is using a stage seven piece of writing. So at this point, our students have the bookmark. They've said the chant, introduction, body, conclusion, hook, big idea, SS light bulb, body, details, 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 about the big idea, conclusion, repeat the big idea, use different words, end it with a snap. We now know all the parts and what needs to be in those parts of this writing through our chant and the visual of our bookmark. Over here, we will write step one for the first step. What do they do first with their bookmark? Please have your students take out a green and red pencil or pen. First thing they will do is take their red pen or pencil and you will have them go to the bookmark and you will tell them, boys and girls, we are first going to circle the parts. What are we going to do? We're going to circle the parts. And what parts are we going to circle? The introduction and the conclusion, not the body. Why? Because if I circle the introduction and the conclusion, then everything that's in the middle is the body. This is an easy way for students to visually identify on their paper where their introduction and body and conclusion are. So the first step is to circle your introduction and the conclusion. After you circle the introduction and conclusion, then you will write an I next to the introduction, a B next to the body, and a C next to the conclusion. Let's go to our paper and do that. I go up to my paper and I see it says dolphin dinner. We've read through the whole paper one time. We're going to say we notice that there's one, two, three paragraphs. Since there's three paragraphs and we are on this stage seven of writing where our goal is three paragraphs, we know that paragraph one is going to be the introduction, 
The middle paragraph will be the body and the conclusion is the third paragraph. So we will go up and circle where the introduction is. We're looking at the indentation and we're gonna go all the way down until we see where it indents again and we will circle this first paragraph. We will then go to the bottom and circle the bottom paragraph. After we've circled the top and the bottom, we have now separated the introduction, body, and conclusion visually for us to see. So we write I, B, C on those parts of our paper. We have our circle the parts completed. That's step one. Next, we'll take out a green pencil. Step two is with a green pencil or pen. And at this point, we will code the text. We will label all the different elements necessary in the introduction, body, and conclusion. So let's go over and underline, code the text with green on our bookmark, and box those elements in the introduction, the hook, the SS light bulb, with green. We'll go to the body and box the D with the number sign to show that we're going to number the details. And finally, at the bottom of the conclusion, we will box S light bulb, for the secret formula to repeat the big idea using different words, and the asterisk for the snappy ending. Let's go to our paper at this point and go to the introduction. We are looking for a hook. So we have splash, what makes a lot of noise when eating? The answer is dolphins. There's our hook. So we will label this part with a hook. We'll actually draw a hook there. Once we have our hook, next we need to identify the SS light bulb, our big idea. So we're going to use SS light bulb. The first S is setting. We're looking for when and where. Setting is optional. Just a reminder, you don't always have a setting unless you need it. But the subject, who or what is the information about, and what's the big idea, why is it so important, that needs to be in the paper. We'll go over here to our big idea. Every day, ooh, we have that, that's a setting. In the coastal regions, I'm gonna put another S there for setting. These crafty creatures, there's our subject, have a clever way to kill their prey. There is my light bulb for the big idea. So I have my hook, setting, setting, subject. And sometimes the students may get the S's mixed up, so you may want to put S-U-B when it's the subject. Setting, setting, subject, light bulb is the big idea. We have all those parts in place, so I know in my introduction I have a hook, I have setting, subject, big idea of my paper. Next I'll go to the body. In the body I'm going to number the sentences. So I will go through and I will say, let's see, here's a sentence, number one. And I will go one D, one detail. When dolphins spot a school of fish, they slap them with their tail flukes so the fish soar in the air. That's my first detail. Number two D, that's my second detail. So notice I'm going to the sentences. I'm making it very simple by isolating the details by the sentences. Second sentence, once they land back in the water, they become dazed and paralyzed. There's my second detail. Next sentence, number three, third detail. Now that the fish can't move, the dolphins easily herd them together into a floating meal. Let's go to our next sentence. That's going to be our fourth detail. So I'm writing the number four with a D. Finally, these playful sea animals are all business when they scoop up the fish with their evenly spaced teeth. I have one, two, three, four details. What you can do, this is actually a very powerful technique, is then underneath your B write one, two, three, four. The first detail was about how the dolphin slaps the fish with their tail to soar in the air. I'm going to write a key word here, tail. 
The next is they land back in the water and they're dazed and paralyzed. So I'm going to just write dazed. I'm just writing a key word to remind me what each one of those sentences details were about. The third detail sentence is, now that the fish can't move, the dolphins easily herd them together into a floating meal. So I will write herd. Finally, these playful sea animals are all business when they scoop up the fish with their evenly spaced teeth. At this point, I'm going to just write eat, that they're going to eat them. Next, I'm going to look at each one of these sentences to see if the content makes sense. First, is it about the clever way they kill their prey? Let's see, they use their tail to make the fish fly in the air, they come back dazed and confused, they herd them together and finally eat them. Yes, these details are about how they kill their prey. Also, I have to ask, do these details have to be in order, meaning a sequence, or they don't have to be in order, meaning categorizing the details? In this particular case, we always look at the big idea. This is telling us a clever way they kill their prey. Well, that has to be in a sequence. That's an order. They're telling us the way they do this and the order is important. So this is a sequence. Next, after making sure these details are about the big idea, I look at tail, dazed, herd, eat. Yes, those are in the right order. That's the order the dolphin goes through in order to capture, kill, and eat their prey. We have all the details. Not only have we identified them, we make sure that they tell about the big idea, and we make sure that they are in the right order. Let's go to the bottom, our conclusion. We've circled the conclusion. Next, we have to label the conclusion statement, S light bulb, and have a snappy ending. So we go to these amazing mammals, that's our subject. Let's write S or S-U-B. Let's go back up. How did we say that in our introduction? We said these crafty creatures. So we said it differently, these amazing mammals. Yes, we did say it differently. Sometimes you have to use the same words. So let children know you just don't want the entire conclusion exactly like the topic sentence. In this case, we were able to state the subject in a different way. Let's look at the big idea. These amazing mammals love to play, but are serious hunters. There's our big idea. So I'm telling you about how they are hunters. They're hunting for their prey. I have over here, have a clever way to kill their prey. So that matches that big idea. That gives that basic idea about how they had hunted their prey. We're now just saying they're hunters. Finally, we have our snappy ending. Splash, is that a dolphin getting ready to eat? Look at that. I'm gonna put my asterisk there for my snappy ending. And look what I did. I actually connected my splash and splash. I was beginning and ending my paper with the same sound effect. Hmm, that's nice writing. It's connecting either with something that's similar or something that has the basic idea that connects the hook and snappy ending together so that they wrap up the whole piece of writing with that hook and snappy ending that are similar. It makes a nice style and a tight piece of writing. So we had splash and splash. What do we say here? What makes a lot of noise when eating? The answer is dolphins. How do we end this? Is that a dolphin getting ready to eat? Ah, so we went into the whole idea of this loud noise and now can we hear a dolphin eating, which connects it back to that hook as well. I have now shown you how to teach your children to concretely go back into their paper, circle the parts, the introduction, body, and conclusion, then code by labeling all the elements they need in the introduction and conclusion for their informational writing. In the demonstration lesson, I showed this bookmark with three paragraphs. On this page, you will see the bookmark. You will see a sample piece of writing. The great news is the steps to this lesson are listed right below the bookmark and the sample above. So you can follow these steps in order to do this. In this writing example, we circled the introduction, we circled the conclusion, we labeled the I next to the introduction section of this paragraph. 
We label the C next to the conclusion section, and then we put the B in the middle. Everything in the middle is the body. After that, we went back and took out our green pencil to code the text. We are going to code the hook, SS light bulb, so our hook and topic sentence, code the details, number them, and then code the conclusion and snappy ending. Remember, you can go back and list out one, two, three, four, five. We had five details here. You can list out each detail, make sure that they match up to the big idea and whether or not they need to be sequenced or in categories. You would be teaching this activity with your students. So when you're doing your whole group writing, this would be what you would do at the end. When everybody has written out their papers, you would go back and circle and label each part. It's very powerful for them to learn to check for all these elements at that meaning level. Does it make sense? Is it organized? And are all the parts there? 